Hi, I'm Susan Rostow, and today I'm going to show you how to do monotypes using Akua Intaglio ink, which is a soy base, and Akua liquid pigment, which is a gum base. Both things are artist quality pigments, and they can be used in a studio without any special ventilation. I'm going to use the Intaglio ink to roll out some dense color so I can begin doing some reductive work. I'm going to add a little transparent base so that I can get this a little lighter in tone. Transparent base, it's basically a Kua Intaglio ink without any pigment. So if you add transparent base to the ink, you'll knock down the intensity of the color. Oh, that's kind of nice what's happening there. I like some of the things that are happening in here, but what I want to get rid of are some of these lap marks. So I'm just going to smooth it out now. I'm going to leave some of the top area for the additive process and the bottom area for the reductive process. Just anything could be a texture. I'll take things that um, are used for other purposes that I may find in the hardware store or outside on the ground. So I'm going to continue doing the reductive process here so that the white of the paper will come through. Each mark gives me a jumping off point for the next mark. When I do monotypes, I use a lot of different types of tools. And one tool that I really like would be stencils. With the light table, you get a truer picture of what actually is on the plate. When you're printing with an etching press, because you have so much pressure, all these fine little details will come through. I like to work in all directions, so I'm going to flip the plate around now, and I'll do my additive work. I'm going to use the Speedball sponge dauber, and it works great with Akua liquid pigment. First, you have to shake the bottle, and I'm going to use the liquid pigment with a little bit of retarder to keep the ink moist. These are great for using just on their own or with stencils. For brushwork, I'll use my palette. I think I'll add a little more of the quinacridone violet liquid pigment. And again, a drop of retarder. The brush that I'm using can also be used to do reductive work. It's originally made for clay, but it's great for mono printing. I'm going to add a little more Akua liquid pigment. When I look out at the sky, I can imagine how the trees and the color of the, the sky and the clouds can be used in a monotype. I imagine the lightness in the Akua liquid pigment because they're thin and transparent. Turn off the light. And then I see the trees and the barks, how they're dark and dense, and I imagine them more like the intaglio ink, which gives you more opacity in the ink. The one thing about Akua intaglio ink that makes it different than any other ink, it can be left out on the palette or all of your equipment forever without drying. So you have as much time as you want to create your image. It dries by absorbing into the fibers of the paper. Oh, I'm gonna clean my plate in this area. Okay. 
And this is a plastic tip. I'm just letting the ink flow naturally without squeezing too much. I don't want puddles, but I do want it to be a little above the surface. I'm gonna roll over it with the Akua Intaglio ink. Just slightly. And you see how that picked up on the brayer? There we go. I like those accidents that happen. Ooh, I love what happened in here. Look at that. Those are the kind of things that, you know, you really can't plan on. Akua liquid pigment is very thin, and Akua intaglio is thicker, and they resist one another. Okay, I think I'm gonna turn this plate around. I'm gonna use my stencil to lock out some areas of red while wiping away. I'm using the wiping fabric. This works so nicely for this process. Now what I wanna do is Fill in those areas with another color. I want the ink to be stiffer, so I'm going to use Mag Mix. Mag Mix is a soy base that has magnesium carbonate in there, and it's used to give a little more body and thicken the ink. I've already used this color, and I want to give it a little more depth. I'm going to add a few drops of the liquid pigment, Thalo Blue, directly into the ink. Once I have my color, I'm going to introduce it into the Mad Mix. Okay. This is looking good. There's just a few more things that I would like to take care of before I print it. See these lap marks? I'm going to use a speedball foam rubber brayer to smooth them out. It just takes a gentle touch. Okay, it's looking good. I am ready to print. My paper is on the press and I am ready to roll. Because this plate is PETG and it's very flexible, it is very easy to handle. I'm going to flip it over. It's a great size for me to work. And it fills my press bed. And I'm going to just roll it down like I do paper. I really like to print the plate on top of the paper. Doing it this way avoids a lot of issues with buckling of the paper. And since this plastic is so soft, it sort of pushes it down. Another thing about working with these flexible plates is I can just flip it over and great. Some of the light areas gives that a nice feeling where the paper is just breathing through. This is my favorite area. That was with the Akua liquid pigment and the Akua needle applicator. And then I rolled over the Akua intaglio ink and then it offset onto the roller and then transferred. And I have all these wonderful marks that just started happening. Okay, let me see how it looks. Oh, this is gonna make a great ghost print. Yep. Roll that up with some release agent and I will have another print to work with. 